need to talk about this. There was one highlight from the debate last week that's still making airwaves today in the mainstream media, and it's when Donald Trump mentioned migrant behavior in Springfield, Ohio. One of those moments from the MSM was when J.D. Vance pushed back against CNN's Caitlin Collins, while also expertly steering the topic away from needless controversy and toward the larger immigration debate. Subscribe to the channel and take a look at this exchange before I tell you more about it. The other thing that he brought up, which I was kind of surprised by, I guess I would say, is he brought up this misleading false claim that you yourself have talked about in recent days about Haitian immigrants in Springfield, Ohio abducting people's pets and eating them, which officials there have said is not true. You yourself acknowledged it may be false on Twitter. You still told people to, to keep spreading it. But Trump just amplified it to tens of millions of people who were watching. Why push something that's not true? Well, well first of all, city officials have not said it's not true. They've said they don't have all the evidence. But they said they heard, have no evidence. We've heard from a number of constituents on the ground, Caitlin, who both firsthand and secondhand reports saying this stuff is happening. So they very clearly, meaning the people on the ground dealing with this, think that it is happening. And I think that it's important for journalists to actually get on the ground and uncover this stuff for themselves when you have a lot of people saying, my pets are being abducted, or geese at the city pond are being abducted and slaughtered right in front of us. J.D. Vance handled that perfectly, especially considering how the Kamala Harris campaign has been using Trump's remarks about Haitian immigrants abducting people's pets. But the truth is, I'm not even interested in this debate. There are about one million Haitian immigrants in the United States, so we can't rubber stamp Donald Trump's claim about the small and concerted Haitian population in the small town of Springfield, Ohio. And while it may not have been the best debate talking point for Donald Trump, I think the media is missing the forest for the trees. The debate around immigration shouldn't be lost in any racism or xenophobia, and perhaps a better approach for Donald Trump would have been to laser focus on the scale of immigration. For a town with a population of just 60,000, no one can argue the fact that adding nearly half more population of immigrants in such a short period of time is going to create all sorts of economic, cultural, and security challenges. That's true for anywhere in the world because every city's infrastructure and employment opportunities cannot increase with such a rapid rise in population. It's a good move by J.D. Vance to take that debate away from a few change statements that the media would love to run with and bring it back to the larger conversation around immigration that they don't want to have. Again, whether those exact rumors turn out to be mostly true, somewhat true, whatever the case may be. Caitlin, this town has been ravaged by 20,000 migrants coming in. Healthcare costs are up. Housing costs are up. Communicable diseases like HIV and TB have skyrocketed in this small Ohio town. This is what Kamala Harris's border policies yeah. have done. And I think it's interesting, Caitlin, that the, the media didn't care about the carnage wrought by these policies until we turned it into a meme about cats. And that speaks to the media's yeah. failure to care about what's going on in these communities. If we have to meme about it to get the media to care, we're going to keep on doing it because the media I, could sh should care about I, what's going on. I saw you say that. I think the media does care about it. I just read a very lengthy report in the New York Times on it. PBS News Hour did a, did a whole story. But, but can I ask by you, us but, talking but you about said, it and bring it up. Nobody cared about, about this until we raised Senator, this issue. You talked is about now, here's something to remember. There is something that separates this microcosm of the immigration debate in Springfield, Ohio, from the large one, it is that most of the Haitian immigrants that have come to the small town are under temporary protected status, who have come from other parts of the United States. That's because Springfield's small and shrinking population had been facing a shortage of labor and workforce, prompting many Haitian immigrants settled in other parts of the country to make their way into the small town. But it almost seems like between the political left and right in America, the truly moderate conversation around immigration is lost, while left-wing media like Caitlin Collins you see here don't even recognize that there's a problem that can arise from large-scale migration. You've got this debate on the right lost by hyper-focusing on singular events or statements. For example, Donald Trump after the debate doubled down on his call to deport illegal migrants and said that he'd start from Springfield, Ohio. You can imagine that it's not something that sits well with many people, especially considering the fact that a vast majority of Haitian immigrants are honest and hardworking people. The right side of the debate is having trouble articulating the broad point, while the left is all too eager to take sound bites and buzzwords to discredit them. Senator, you talked about that your office has gotten a lot of reports. I mean, if someone calls your office and says they saw Bigfoot, that doesn't mean they saw Bigfoot. Why? I mean, you have a sense 
a responsibility as a running mate, and he certainly does as, as the candidate to not promote false information, but right? Caitlin, it's a totally fair point, but nobody's calling my office and saying that they saw Bigfoot. What they're calling and saying is we're seeing migrants kidnap our dogs and cats, and city officials aren't doing anything about it. Now, again, I have a responsibility as a United States senator. I think the media has a responsibility as an institution that cares about truth to actually take people seriously when they say their lives have been ruined by this migrant crisis. And again, if every single thing that the media says about this story is false, the verifiable facts are that this community has had their lives destroyed by 20,000 migrants coming in and uprooting life. Uh, again, officials said no credible evidence of the claim. But Senator J.D. Vance, thank you for joining us. with Thanks, your Again, that last part of what J.D. Vance said only gives more ammo to the other side until the entire debate crumbles. It's not all 20,000 immigrants that are uprooting life in the town, but a small percentage that may be prone to criminality as one group is. Especially one that is escaping violence and oppression in their home country, and that can damage the very real conversation about the other effects of mass migration to such a small town that deserve to be talked about, which is the myriad of problems that arise when a population swells so fast without the necessary employment and housing to handle it. That's the more fundamental problem that one breeds more criminality when a subset of those migrants face desperation. The impact of all of that is inevitably going to be felt by the local population, and no matter whether net migration is positive or negative, the people that live in those places should have a voice in the council or constituency to ask for a slowdown of that migration. When that isn't allowed or channelized properly, that's the kind of political culture where more fringe ideas can take hold, including theories like the idea of migrants abducting people's pets, whether they're true or not. Here's a citizen from Springfield, Ohio, trying to make that point to officials. I think it's like kind of odd that like a guy like me has to come out from doing what I do on a daily basis to have fun because I see what's going on in these streets. And I see you guys just sitting up there in them comfy chairs and suits and like, and I'm getting out here every day and I'm broadcasting this and you guys are just sitting up there in suits. Or like I, I really challenge you guys to get out here and do something. These Haitians are running into trash cans. They're running into buildings. They're running into... They flipping cars in the middle of the street. And I don't know how, like, y'all can be comfortable with this. Like, I don't know, like, who's getting paid from this. I feel like, I honestly feel like someone's getting paid from it in the background. They dropping, they, you got a bunch of people on a bus getting dropped off at a gas station to come down here. I know a single mom that FaceTimed me tonight, FaceTimed me this morning at the welfare office that really need, like, that really need something. And it's nothing but immigrants over there. And I don't even want to, like, seem like I'm coming down on the immigrants because it's the people that's bringing them down here. Because wherever they're at, that's what they're used to, bro. They're in the park grabbing up ducks by their neck and cutting their head off and walking off with them and, and eating them. Like The point is that the people on the ground who are American citizens need to have their voice heard. Failure to do that doesn't just make them sit in silence, but allows a resentment to brew that creates an atmosphere ripe for rumors and ideas to gain ground. And if both ends of the political spectrum can't articulate the true and moderate stance on it, that's only going to lead to a greater bubbling of resentment against the political structure. Let me know in the comments if you agree, because this is a matter that's going to demand bipartisan attention sooner or later.